G'day some Mary in the Valley and anyone else. I thought it was time to have another look at a book and uh, the book I'm going to introduce you to and recommend to you is this one uh, called The Rise of Christianity by Rodney Stark. Uh, I read this book when I was a student at Theological College and it made a really big impact on me. I think partly because like all of us at the time I was uh, grappling with questions of mission and what does it look like for the church to um, to uh, offer Christ to the world in a way that hopefully sees that message as an attractive thing. How can the church grow? And, uh, you know, ch Christians normally come up with answers to that question that um, seem often a little bit gimmicky. Um, you know, uh, the, 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 the solution to church growth is this program or that program or this church planting strategy or this website or, or whatever. You know, there's all sorts of ideas. Um, what, what the author of this book does is he, he says, well, how did the church grow in the ancient world? And he doesn't approach it as a Christian. He approaches it as a sociologist of religion. That's his job. He's a, he's a professor and he's a sociologist. He studies people and communities and how they function. Uh, just as an interesting aside, I did hear or I read, I think, that um, Rodney Stark uh, came to Christian faith as a result of writing this book and as a result of some of the things he discovered. But he's not approaching this in any way as a Christian. Um, what he's doing is trying to answer a, a historical question. Uh, and the question, that question is the subtitle of the book. How did an obscure, marginal Jesus movement become the dominant religious force in the Western world in a few centuries? I mean, it is incredible when you think about it. N not particularly educated, um, not, not uh, large numbers, uh, their leader recently uh, crucified, and yet the early church went from this small beleaguered and persecuted group to a to one that, that grew so rapidly that it uh, became very popular after a few years to to join them. If you weren't a Christian, you didn't feel like you were part of the in crowd. How did how did it get to that point? Well, he um, he answers this by looking at a whole bunch of different things, but his fundamental answer is that the 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 the, the the guiding or the, the, the common thread through all of the different aspects of this story is a thing called virtue, a way of life that was present in these communities that was quite different uh, from the way of life on offer in society at large. Uh, the Christians had a virtue, a, a sense of who they were in the world, what, it, what life was all about, a sense of hope after death, a, a, um, a sense of living in a way that affirmed human dignity that made it a very attractive movement for many, many people in the ancient world. Now, he looks at this issue of virtue by looking at a bunch of different aspects and the chapters are broken up around these different themes that he explores. Uh, interestingly, one of those themes is to do with epidemics and uh, plagues. Really interesting story there, you know, um, Plagues would sweep through the ancient world, through particularly in cities, which were pretty much, uh, you know, petri dishes with humans in them, very infectious places. And when plague would arrive, if you had the ability to get out of town, that's what you did. The people who stayed were those who were already sick or those who couldn't leave for whatever reason. Then this other group of people decided that they would stay. And it became the norm for Christian leaders and bishops and uh, other Christians to stay in the town when the plague arrived. They didn't do that out of some cunning plan to grow the church. Uh, quite the opposite. Uh, they expected it to shrink the church because they expected to die, and many of them did. But they felt it was their duty as followers of Jesus Christ to care for the sick and dying, to minister to them in their need, to um, treat the bodies of the dead with great dignity and to give them a proper burial. Many of them died, but interestingly, and this wasn't the goal, but interestingly, uh, because the sick received a basic level of medical care from these Christians who were staying to look after them, uh, the, the, uh, their overall survivability rates were increased. And many of them joined the church because they wanted to worship the God of these people who had cared for them in their darkest hour. And so plagues, although they took the lives of many, many Christians who were trying to live out their calling to follow Jesus and care for the vulnerable, um, they ended up having the strange effect, unexpected effect, of increasing um, the survivability rates within the Christian community. And so the numbers of Christians grew relative to the size of the population. Uh, really interesting story. Another little aspect that he looks at is the role of women. 
Uh, you know, if you were a woman in the ancient world, you were in a very powerless situation. You, you existed for breeding purposes and pleasure purposes for men. Uh, they could pretty much use you how they wanted to. Uh, your rights were very limited and very few women could uh, arrive at positions of real prominence. Um, and, and actually when women, you know, the, the other thing that women found really deeply traumatic, obviously, was that so often they would carry a child through, uh, through to childbirth but if the child was a girl, or if the child uh, was not one that the, the master wanted to keep, um, the woman would be forced to kill her own child or to have it exposed on a mountainside to be picked up by wild beasts or something like that. Um, terrible thing for women to have to live through. Forced abortions as well uh, were the norm in the ancient world. Um, and here was this community that was different from that where, first of all, women's places were really affirmed and, and revered. Uh, women in the life of Jesus were, uh, were, were very prominent and had a special place in the Christian community. Obviously, Mary, Jesus' mother, um, a, a wonderful, maybe the greatest model of faith in the New Testament. Um, but also other women who were part of the, the, the Jesus movement, who were um, his trusted friends and disciples. Uh, women active in the early church. And... Um, and also children were loved and cared for. So the children of these women uh, were, were, were never going to be, um, were never going to be uh, exposed and left to die. They were cared for as valuable. Um, obviously in those communities, abortion was not okay. Um, and so those practices weren't happening. And so overall, um, you had the emergence of this kind of um, fairly healthy family life and uh, children who would be born into those communities because of this positive view of both women and children. And of course, that, that had a big impact um, for the, the future of the church um, and its numbers. Um, there's a whole bunch of other um, aspects that Rodney Stark looks at as well in this book, and I'd really recommend it to you. It's, it's, it's just fascinating if you're interested in history, if you're interested in church growth, if you're interested in, um, in what it is for people and communities to change uh, their mindset uh, and, uh, and to come to a new set of beliefs. Uh, I think this book has a lot of relevance for the, for the current church as well, because rather than searching for gimmicks and rather than looking for quick solutions or a slick marketing techniques, this is a book that shows us how in the past what Christians have done is, is nothing more glamorous than simply try in community to live out the life of faith in Jesus. Um, it has its own rewards. Uh, it, it's, it's not the, the numbers are not the goal, but, but you know when a community lives that way, people look on and they say, that's attractive, I want some of that. And so I'd recommend this book to you, The Rise of Christianity by Rodney Stark. Get it, have a look, and let me know what you think. Cheers. Bye.